Hello, welcome back to my Direwolf tutorial series. So in the last episode we were working with the modular power suits and I want to show you a few things that I've learned since then. So first of all, we're pretty far along in the game as far as gathering resources, so none of the stuff to make or none of the resources to make the power suit items is beyond our reach. The only thing I had some problems with is the ender pearls. Um, I had to go kill some more endermen to get enough ender pearls for everything, but um, other than that, we have more than enough stuff to make anything for modular power suits. So I also want to show you that they had some different graphics last time for some of the things, and I'm not quite sure why, but I redoubted the server and the pack to make sure I've got the newest version, the 1014. And so all the things look like I saw them look in the videos, like the wiring looks a lot different, and the solenoid looks a lot different. So I don't know why they looked why they looked different in the last video, but um, I have fixed that problem if it was a problem, I don't really know. So, as far as modular power suits goes, since I've got so many flux tools, I have pretty much unlimited energy for these power suits. That's, that's kind of handy. So, I've added just about everything that I can think of that could be useful. So, let's go down a couple things I want to discuss about the modular power suits. First of all, the flight control. This is essential for making the jetpack usable. If you have this, you can actually use the jetpack, and it's so much more... It's... it's I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's a night and day difference in the control. So, this is very important. Um, I added night vision. You can see we have night vision right now, and it works perfectly. In fact, it is night right now, so let's go outside, and I'll show you. I have turned the brightness controls back to moody. And I'm just flying across the map. I've got about half... Let's see, this is walking, this is sprinting. So I've got it about halfway. Uh, I hate the zomblets. Okay, where was I? Okay, the brightness setting. It works perfectly. Turn the jetpack on, and I now have much better control over my jetpack and I can just fly. I haven't got any more messages about flight being disabled either so it must change the mechanics a little bit or maybe it's just that I have control I'm no longer hovering in place which is how they, I think the game detects flight. Alright, turn the jetpack back off. Um, the night vision works well underwater too and I've added these swim boosters to swim faster so we can jump into our quarry and if you can hear that noise, that's the jetpack, and I can see underwater. This is really handy. I don't think I have anything for faster mining. Let me see here. Now, I still seem to be mining kind of slow underwater, but you know what? That's what a quarry's for. But I could go look for bushes down here, I suppose, if I wanted. So I swim very fast with that thing. I'll turn the jetpack back on. Oh, the jetpack also has like this little hover mode here, so if I go up, I'm just, you know, it'll slowly f make me fall down as I go forward, but I can press Z to go down, space to go up, and I can just stay this level if I want to. So if I were breaking a block somewhere, that might be very easy now. Hello, zombie. Oh, hey, um, I got the energy shields, turned them all the way up, so I've got about 340,000 energy units with this. There should be a bunch of monsters over here. There's a spider. Let's see here. Yeah, he's no threat to me. Where are the monsters? Is it daytime now? Oh, the sun came up. They all burned to death. But as you can see... I've got pretty good armor with these energy plates. Maybe I will come back and show you just like tons of those things hammering me at the same time. But it takes energy, but I've got way more energy than I think we'll be able to use. So 
this is working out very well now. I'll go back to the base and we'll do back to the tinker table. Oh, here it is. Okay, so what else did I put on here? So the auto feeder, and that works perfectly too. It just feeds you whenever you need it. It's great. All you have to do is make sure you've got food in your inventory, and it even, you know, it, it seems to hold on to the food. It doesn't waste it either, so it's just perfect. The water, water electrolyzer, I can breathe underwater. It, it seems to last indefinitely, just about power, and I've got way too much of that. Night vision you've already seen. The flight control makes that much more usable. I also added heat sinks to every one of these. Since I replaced the energy shield, I no longer have any weight from my plating. So I put all the weight into the heat sink. So it's five kilograms for each one of these. And that ends up being 25 for the weight. And then I guess I put some more in this battery. Yeah, because... All right, whatever. But um, what I found out is that if you're too hot, you catch on fire and you can't extinguish. So before I had good control of the jetpack, I fell in, into the nether lava. And, uh, I, you know, I jumped out, but I, I, I could not stop burning because there was no way to get rid of the heat. So heat sinks, very useful. I haven't actually tested how useful they are. I may have to look into that. I haven't tried magnet mode, but I want to do that. Um, let's see, what else here? The legs, I had the swim boost. I think that's about it. So heat sinks, energy shields, and the seeing at night, feeding yourself, all those work very well. I definitely want to try the magnet mode. Probably I don't care about the active camouflage, but we'll see. All right. I think I'll wait for it to be night and come back and show you just tons of mobs attacking me because they're not going to touch me. This armor is, well, you know, it's all about energy, and I've got plenty of that now. So uh, I, I guess I wish I would have started with this earlier because, you know, I, I kind of skipped all the early game stuff here. But, um, oh well, modular power suits, definitely a nice addition. All right, I'll be back to show you either the magnet mode. Yeah, I'll be actually in magnet mode, and we'll show you a bunch of mobs attacking me at once to see if the armor is pretty good. Back in a flash. Okay, I'm back. I added the magnet, so let's go find some mobs to weigh on me, and we'll see how the magnet works. Ooh, Enderman, awesome. Oh, I don't fear Enderman. Okay, as you can see, my armor's pretty good. I'm not being really hurt at all. Didn't know if you could see that, but everything is being drawn towards me. Let's go... Ooh, more Endermen. Cool. I don't need to be afraid of these things. Okay, Creepers are a different story. Creepers are going to blow up the floor, and uh, there's a big hole under there. Yep. All right. Okay, how do I get out of here? All right. So, creepers are a different story. Creepers, <laughs> you know, I did not build my floor down enough to get back from my quarry, so I really need to dig down like three or four more, but but as you can see, magnet mode, 
Did you see everything flying towards me? See all the flesh flying towards me? The rotten flesh? Yeah. Magnet works well, and they really can't touch me. Uh, Fraps is kind of in my way. I can't tell how much energy I have. I think it says about 310. So if that's the case, then you can see that I still have plenty of energy. I do not like the tiny zombies. Oh, creepers. I can breathe underwater, and I've got feather fall, so, you know, I won't be hurt by going down there. It's just annoying to have to get out. But all in all, uh, yeah, modular power suits is pretty good. Ah. Okay, that one I did better, but yeah, going forward now would definitely help. All right, I'm going to run away from all these things, maybe murder the creeper, because I hate them, and be back to show you some more things from Thermal Expansion, I think. I watched Dire Wolf Spotlight on Thermal Expansion 3, and it gave me some other ideas. So, we'll be back in a flash. Okay, I'm back. I made a key to turn night vision mode off, and the reason is that in your inventory, these indicators force some parts of the, the display over. Like, here's the inventory settings, so that's forced over. I don't use it very often, but it's annoying to have that over. I think they did a little bit better in this update. I updated to the Direwolf 1016 pack, and um, Thomcraft Research has gotten, I think, better. I want to try it for a short time, but I think I might be able to get into Thomcraft now, so that might happen next episode, but we'll see. But I made a key to turn that off so that my displays go back to normal, this goes back to being in the right place, and a couple other things. I erased my character data so that all my Thomcraft stuff would be erased, so we can go from Thomcraft from the beginning. Um, I also want to show you that your knapsack inventory is tied to your player data, so if you ever lost your player data on the server, your knapsack data is in there, so I want to be sure you clean out your knapsack before you erase your player data if you ever decide to do that for some reason. Okay. Um, the system, the scrap recycling system, still just isn't working that well. It's it's still misplacing stuff. So we're going to replace the whole thing. Um, we're going to use a vacuum hopper from Open Blocks instead of the obsidian pipe, and we're going to use an autonomous activator from Thermal Expansion. The autonomous activator will not make those annoying noises that I have to muffle with the sound muffler. And the vacuum hopper has a much better range. And all the only real cost involved is the ender pearl. We've got plenty of those right now. So if I can spell vacuum, it's a hopper, a piece of obsidian, and ender pearl. Then we need an autonomous activator. Autonomous. Autonomous. If I could sound out words. Okay, we need a chest. We need some tin, a piston, and a pneumatic servo. Okay, we don't have almost any of that. Make a chest. Make a servo, make a piston, all right, there we go, an autonomous activator. So let me grab my flux omni wrench and we'll go downstairs and see how that works. Need a pickaxe too, not quite downstairs enough. All right, so I'm going to break this dispenser and the enter the pipe. Need to put the stone back. Didn't mean to break that. Okay, so we now want to have this autonomous activator over here. 
and you can see that by default it is activated. We could turn it off with a lever. In fact, I think I might do that. Okay, there we go. Yeah, off, on, okay. That's what I want. So, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this vacuum hopper. Is this too far away? Yeah, I think I'd like to be closer. Let me change this setup just a little bit. I want the autonomous activator to be basically one away from this chest, well, two away. The vacuum hopper is going to go here, blank space here, autonomous activate. That's what I want. All right, put that lever back. All right, and put the vacuum hopper here. You can see it's got some nice ender particle things, so click on the interface, go to the right side, click on it. You can see now where it's going to output things. So you can see that if we were to just throw things on the floor like this redstone engine, it just sucks it up. It's got a pretty good range. So let's get our cabling and our... What else do we need? We need that item duct back and I could use some scaffolding. I need that packager. And I need to climb up here. Okay, so I need That looks right. So we are exporting the scrap if it has a signal. I guess I'll just make that the signal, not the autonomous activator. Okay, so it's getting stuff, it's making scrap. So let's make that an output and we'll put the servo back in there so that it is ignored the input is on the top and you can see the scrap boxes are in there but we have a high setting so it's not doing anything right now so Okay, our setup is basically complete, so what does the autonomous activator and hopper do for us? Well, basically, let me get another lever. So I can turn the off and on if I need to. So, the autonomous activator is basically an automated player. It can do almost anything a player could click on. So if it has things in its inventory, it can click on them. It can right click on them, which will open them. And it can fire things out, or it can aim at a certain level. Like if it was clicking on something specific, it could click up high, up or down low, or right in front of it. So here's its area where it's gonna click on things, or where it's going to dispense things. Its actions, it can left click or right click, and this item use is how it determines which items could get clicked on and when. It can do random, it can use only the first slot, or it can round robin, which means it goes between all of them all the time. I'm just gonna round robin, and it can sneak or not sneak. So it can shift click, or sneak click really, because it's not actually shift clicking, it's just that the shift key is usually the sneak key. So let's turn it on and see it work. You can see it goes a little bit to the left or right, but that's okay. The vacuum hopper is very good at putting this right where it needs to go. 
and there's no more of that dispenser noise so I don't need anything to muffle the sound which I like quite a bit. So I'm going to change this to ignored and take my lever back. I don't want the lever there. And it's just going to work until it's done. Awesome. Okay, so this I think is a better setup. And I don't think this one will lose. I don't know how what the range of this is. In fact, let's 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 test it. Okay. I mean, okay, not there, but there. So one, two, so about three blocks. So anywhere this is going to throw things by mistake. If it, clicks, if it goes over here or right in here, the vacuum hopper is going to get it. So I think this setup is going to work. So yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to check time. If we have time, I'm going to show you how we can use the vacuum hopper to work with the experience farm. I haven't been touching the... I haven't been touching the essence berries right now. And I wanted to show you one more, a couple more things here, like um, Wayla is now compatible with the ender lily seeds. So you can see now it knows when they're grown. So, that's kind of nice. Alright, I'm going to go check the time. We'll be right back. Okay, we're at about 21 minutes, so I think I'm going to end this video. I did want to mention one more thing. Um, I spent a lot of time fixing my quarry holes, and the reason is that I stopped the server and went back in and went around here and the server just came to a crawl. I couldn't figure out what was causing the lag. I even went and watched Direwolf's Opus video to figure out how you find the lag and you know my machines in the base are causing a little bit but I mean it's very very small. But if I looked on my server it would say you know I was generally getting about five milliseconds for a tick and 50 milliseconds would be 20 ticks per second which is what you need in order to not have lag so five is not bad but I, I'd go over here or I'd run around and it would go up to 60 70 90 170 and it became completely unplayable so I was trying to figure out why and the answer is it's the flowing water calculations I don't, if you remember, I told you about the endothermic pump and how that helps reduce lag in the nether by making sure there's no flowing lava. Well, um, flowing water is also bad. If you've got giant quarries all next to each other and they're all flowing water into each other and they're flowing it from, you know, from the surface, like level 70, all the way down to bedrock and every way in between, um, the lag is just outrageous. So I spent a lot of time getting rid of all the water down there and covering up the holes properly with like five or six layers of something, dirt and cobblestone. So I have fixed all the lag, but I think it may be very important um, when you're running a quarry to you know, watch out for those kind of problems. One thing that I saw suggested on forums was to make quarries over the ocean. Since the ocean is all source blocks, there shouldn't really be any flowing. Although, I don't know, I would think there'd be flowing under that, but maybe it doesn't calculate, you know, a certain part down. But, um, maybe the answer is to make sure that once your quarry starts, you want to put your water source box at the very top level so that you can fill them in quite easily and you want to make sure you fill those in with dirt or go back with buckets or something. I didn't test how a pump would work but um, that's something else I thought might be a good idea to try you know some kind of pump. I'm hoping that Den of Lions will finish his quarry plus plus at some point and we can stop using the build craft quarry because quarry plus plus looks like it'll be a much nicer quarry. But um, you know, it's not there yet, so. I saw something in this update called an Ender Quarry. Either from Extra Utilities or Open Blocks, I want to look into. When I cleared out the 
big giant holes, I went and found a lot more of these orberry bushes. So the farm is now full. I probably want, you know, I probably don't need any tin orberry bushes. It probably could be all iron, copper, and essence. I've got some gold in here too somewhere, I think. Yeah, I've got a few gold. So, so the berry farm is running pretty well. In fact, we've got, I had several thousand berries of everything except the gold type, which I just got. But that's working pretty well. But, okay, so four quarries, if you're going to dig them over land, you might want to put water at the top. Oh, but you don't want to put water in before the quarry starts running because um, that laser that clears out the area, it will destroy water source blocks as well. So if there's water source blocks, like, like if there's a lake somewhere and you think, oh, that water's just going to run down. No, that is not the case. If the laser touches it, it destroys the water source block. So you need to wait till the quarry scaffolding is built, or at least in the process of being built, and then go dig a place for your water. And, you know, that I think would be the best way to make sure the quarry water is working. Maybe even build, I don't know, a water tower. That may be an interesting idea for doing that. Another idea that people suggested on the forums was um, mistcraft quarries. I don't know a lot about mistcraft, but basically it's about making your own worlds, and and then you can destroy the world later on. So that seems like it might be the best solution. If I figure out how to do mistcraft, I might, I might look into that, but um, I don't know anything about it right now. So uh, next time, I think we're going to do some Thomcraft stuff, or maybe we'll do the Liquid Experience. I know less about Mistcraft than I knew about Thomcraft, so I don't think I can get into that yet, but I'll look into it. Alright, see you next time.